Good evening, Yonar Zarkeshov, uh, Principal at White Shield Partners. We're here for the launch of the Global Labor Resilience Index 2020 here in Davos, 21st of January. And one of the aspects behind the study was to focus on a few uh, economies, and there was a focus on Kazakhstan and a, a zoom, a deep dive on labor market resilience in Kazakhstan. Could you tell us a bit about the approach that was used to uh, assess labor market resilience in Kazakhstan and what were some of the results of the study? Sure. Thank you, Anthony. This year, White Shield Partners, beside the usual spa suspects like the US and the UK and other industrialized economies, decided to zoom in into one of the emerging economies, which is this year is Kazakhstan. Um, there, uh, there are cross-cutting uh, uh, characteristics of emerging economies that could be applied to uh, not only to Kazakhstan, but other countries. But in our study of Kazakhstan, we saw that uh, the the national statistics, national indicators, uh, hide the uh, significant disparities in the uh, regional um, uh, characteristics. So, if we talk about Kazakhstan's regions like uh, Atarau and Mangistau, seemingly uh, very similar in terms of oil-driven uh, GRPs, they are still very different in terms of the public choices made, public policies made, and they are different in terms of the labor resilience. Now, uh, in terms of the um, uh, overall, uh, Kazakhstan's development, it is uh, significantly um, overwhelmed uh, with the regional disparities in terms of the growth poles across the country. So we saw uh, that the certain growth poles in Kazakhstan uh, are not particularly contributing to the spillover effects to the uh, proximities regions uh, around those growth poles. So the labor uh, resilience in every region uh, is different from each other. So in one of the analysis, we have a heat map looking and showing not one Kazakhstan, but at least four or five Kazakhstans, which is uh, something uh, to uh, to deep um, uh, dive into because for the policymakers uh, who are tackling the different competing priorities, uh, it should be uh, also um, analyze which sectors to put forward the the biggest investments in terms of the regional uh, uh, development in a country as large as Kazakhstan. Now, uh, there are common char characteristics of in, uh, emerging economies like Kazakhstan, which first of all is the informality of the, the shadow economy, which is relevant to many countries uh, uh, in the emerging world. And the uh, shadow economy hides a lot of uh, statistics, a lot of uh, factors that shape the uh, the resilience of the labor market. So we need to improve the, we need to look at the issues of the quality of statistics. We need to look at the, um, um, to what extent the uh, labor migration within the country and from the neighboring countries to a particular country also affects the uh, la uh, labor resilience in, uh, in a particular country's uh, labor force. So these uh, cross-cutting um, factors can be relevant to many emerging economies. Very good. So clearly not all regions are created equally uh, in, in Kazakhstan, and uh, there may be different policies that need to be adapted by, by region. Based on the results of this study for Kazakhstan, to what extent do you see applications uh, for countries in the wider Eurasia region? The Global Labor Resilience 2020 um, revealed for Kazakhstan that uh, Kazakhstan has been doing relatively well on the structural side whereas there is a lot of potential for the policy uh, factor uh, to be improved and there must be some tailor-made uh, policies made by the decision makers for an opportunity to leapfrog. That is actually a relevant comment for so many economies across the Eurasia uh, countries because of the um, you know, common demographic situations probably, but most importantly because of the um, the quality of government and the quality of decisions made by the decision makers for, uh, in the policy uh, policy side. Excellent. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you.